Hi, I'm David R. Lewis. Welcome to Theater of the Mind. Several times I have been asked a simple question. How did you learn how to write? The flippant answer is that it all started when I learned how to read. And to some extent, that's a truthful answer. Even though I've written a number of books and am often called an author, what I do is simpler than that. I tell stories. I was raised by a man born in the late 1800s. He and his friends were all storytellers. Wonderful tales flowed from them like nectar. In their youth, there was not even radio. They were from a storytelling era. During my brief association with higher learning, I was lucky enough to be told by a professor of literature that if I wanted to continue to think for myself, I should get the hell out of there. I took his advice. I was a storyteller at the time because of my upbringing, and I loved to read because of an early childhood without television. The true beauty of reading or hearing a story is the freedom that comes from being able to construct the tale in your own theater of the mind, free from someone else's interpretation of the visual or audible components. That allows us to create the scenes and characters with our imagination. If you want to learn to write, read. Several authors have influenced me over the years. Robert Heinlein wrote wonderful science fiction back in the 50s. Of course, he had a marvelous imagination and set the standard for sci-fi back in that time. But his true skill was the ability to write in just a sentence or two what would have taken Hemingway or Steinbeck paragraphs to relate. Dan Jenkins, who wrote primarily sports-related fiction, had the ability to create characters that the reader simply wanted to get to know. His writing was honest, irreverent, insightful, and gloriously funny. Elmore Leonard wrote in several genres and was magnificent in his ability to produce dialogue that was nearly irresistible. The late Robert B. Parker was delightful in his brevity and created a cast of characters I have carried with me through the years. I do not attempt to write in the same way as these authors, that would be foolish. But I have learned from reading them, and some others, to keep my writing simple, depend on my characters to make the story happen, to give each one his own voice, and to be honest with the reader. Due diligence is another point. If you intend to write fiction, get your facts straight. Know your subject. If you're writing about a group of army rangers in Afghanistan, you better know the weapons, clothing, terrain, populace, and attitudes involved. If not, your credibility goes out the window. Credibility is absolutely vital and depends on research, research, and more research. Characters are the driving force in any story. Listen to how people speak. Dialogue and dialect are two of the most difficult challenges of writing. They must be natural, unforced, and change with the characters. A character from Alabama is not going to have the same speech pattern and accent as a character from Nebraska. If they do, honesty just left the building. Don't fall in love with your words. You are not your target consumer. On more than one occasion, I have thrown away 20 or 30,000 words and started over. Why? Because, for whatever reason, I let my love of words make the story cumbersome or too complicated. Nobody likes to have to retreat a few pages and search for information to make sense of what he has just read. I know my characters. Now and then I get lucky enough to just throw them into the middle of a scene or plot and then simply follow along and write down what they do. Believable characters are the strongest asset to good writing. Plots whiz by us all the time, but the characters in our lives stay with us, rich in remembrance, anchored firmly in our minds. The writing world is swimming with lessons on technique, vocabulary, outlining, creating conflict, grammar restrictions, plot development, on and on. There are so many rules and regulations, it's easy to get bogged down in the mechanics of the process that creativity becomes smothered. 
I once asked the director of a major university library what the term literary really meant. Oh, David, she said, it means they don't sell. Read. At least, that's how it seems to me. I'm David R. Lewis. Thanks for joining me on Theater of the Mind. Sorry about the mess in the parking lot.